Just come off the water today. We've had a good session on the kings and the snapper. We've only kept what we need. We've dispatched the fish humanely. We've put them in an ice slurry, which really firms up the meat. A lot of people will leave the fish on the deck for a long time, just sitting in the sun, and it's really not the right thing to do if you want to preserve your fish to the best possible way. And we've got two knives here, pretty much my main two filleting knives. One's one's my filleting one, one's my, more of my skinning one, depending on what type of fish I'm doing. This is a 16 centimetre boning knife. Uh, it's a stiff blade boning knife. I sort of like it. You can work around the bone a bit easier. Some people like the flexi blade. Everyone has their own way. And, and, and realistically, at the end of the day, a sharp knife is uh, key. And with the Victoria Knox, they've been doing it for 130 years. They're the real deal. Here's the king we decided to keep for the day. It's great size eating. Not too big, not too small. It's going to feed, feed a fair few people. It's served well. It's, it's, uh, and I'm going to show you how I would fill it a king. So I always like to make a cut across the behind the peck pin there. That gives me the end of the fillet basically. And then from there, this is why I like the boning knife, because you follow the bone. And then I usually turn it around. And be careful with these knives on your fingers. They're very sharp. And then I run, it's probably advisable to wear a glove with your left hand or the other hand of your knife. Run straight along the bone there and you can sort of see. There's two ways, you can go over the rib cage and, and cut the whole rib cage out. I don't really like cutting the rib cage out because I don't really eat. And then we'll just come across. And that's it, that's the side of the fish off. You really want to keep fresh water off this, off the fillet once, it's, once you've been filleted. It, it softens the meat and takes away from the, fl the flavour from the table. Now this is where I probably use my 20 centimetre filleting knife basically going to get rid of the gut cavity just to maximise maximise meat of what I'm going to take home and really just want to get underneath the bones and just sort of work you, you can basically get your knife to follow the bone but being on a stainless stable you really don't want to be knife blade straight on it it's fine if you're sort of you know working across it like that but anything anything straight across it you, ideal you know the ideal situation would be to have a nylon or a timber a timber workbench. You really want a flexi blade so you can basically get down on the fillet and sort of flex that blade along. So you really just want to, I mean, it's going through like butter. Being... Just watch your fingers. I always sort of pull it back, run it back again, and then this is ready to cut into whatever portion size you want to, you know, whatever you want to pack at home or meal size. These knives are pretty new, so they're very sharp. Um, but generally after you know, half a dozen or a few trips, they, they'll lose their edge. You're generally around 20 degrees, 20 degrees to the steel. Both, one each way. I only need to do it half a dozen times. I've been using these knives for, say, the last 10 years. Um, they make 120,000 knives a day. So, and they come with a, a full lifetime warranty. So you're sort of not just buying a good knife, you're buying a good brand that's backed.